Ooh, you've got a big screen. Well, 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 look at the size of those speakers. My, my, what a fantastically arranged. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just talking about desks. When I first designed this studio, I went deep down into the rabbit hole of productivity desk setups on YouTube, and that's a potentially very expensive rabbit hole. People showcasing the latest tech, elegantly composed to the nth degree, a calibrated minimalism that marries aesthetics with productivity. And this was all because I didn't want my studio to just be a place to record. I'd spent years huddled in a corner, buried under sound blankets. So what I really craved was a space with natural light that I could work throughout the day in. Now this studio took about two months to build structurally, so I had a lot of time to review my options. And I've previously covered the rationale behind most of my decisions when setting up my studio in this video already. But it's one thing to design a space and another thing to live in it. So as it's coming up to me having this studio for a year, I wanted to review what I've changed, what I've kept, and the rationale behind that. Of course, the obvious place to start is with my recording equipment, and the computers that I use are incredibly important in that. So I use an M1 Mac Mini as my main recording device because it runs completely silently. And being able to have it in the room is really convenient, especially in remote recording sessions. It means that I don't have to store it either in a separate room or create a, some form of partition. But I also have my MacBook Pro integrated into this setup. Now my MacBook Pro is uh, much more powerful in terms of RAM and storage. And so that's what I use mainly for my video editing. The only problem with that is that because it's an Intel processor, it does get quite noisy so when I am doing all of that content creation it does start to kind of kick off but that's not really an issue when I'm actually doing my recording and the useful thing about having uh, the MacBook Pro is that I can take it anywhere with me so if I want a change of scene if I want to go outside or if I want to go to a cafe or anything else like that then it's still fantastic to be able to take all of my work with me on the go as well my Audient ID22 preamp is something that I've had for a few years now and it's a really solid piece of kit it's right in the middle of my desk so I can adjust the gain either during editing or recording my Logitech mouse and SteelSeries keyboard is probably the closest I'm ever going to get to streaming. But the really marvellous thing about it is that thanks to the KVM switch, I can switch between the two Macs seamlessly without having to change any cables over. My LG ultrawide monitor has proven a real lifesaver. In recording sessions, it means that I can have my door up as well as the script and as well as the client in a remote session. Whereas when I'm actually doing marketing, it means that I can have my CRM and my emails up as well as any content that I'm actually working with so it means that I can swap between things so much more quickly. My Yellowtech Mika stand has really stood up well it's still fully adjustable and I haven't had to calibrate it at all in a year in terms of having to tighten it up or it getting loose or anything else like that and as a little but incredibly valuable addition I've also included a little pen holder on the side of it so I know exactly where to put my eye pencil after I've annotated a script. To hold my iPad I actually use an adjustable bed tablet stand which is actually no longer available via Amazon but other equivalents probably are. The great thing about this also being the fact that I can move it into a position and it just stays there. There's no sagging after time. My Genlex speakers were a really important addition for editing and for the sake of my ears, so I wasn't listening to things through headphones all of the time, though I appreciate I am a bit of a heathen that they are at desk height when they should be at ear height. For a webcam, I actually got a gooseneck uh, iPhone holder and then used one of my old iPhones as my webcam using a software that I would really recommend called Camo. So it allows my webcam to be at a much higher definition than my old one was, and it also means that I can move it around. So if a director wants to see what I'm doing physically with my body whilst I'm, uh, whilst I'm doing voiceover, then I can just swivel it immediately and then they can see my full body. And because video is so seamlessly integrated into my whole setup it's why I've started to try doing video messaging as opposed to just cold email marketing. I soon found that having a range of ambient light sources as well as the main lights in my studio were really important to me so I added an adjustable lamp and I also backed a Kickstarter campaign for this amp light which is this lovely little webcam which is completely adjustable. You can take it off its fixing, adjust its angle and also the warmth and coolness of the light as well as the strength but probably the most notable additions to my studio 
Studio have been on the content creation side. I use my own iPhone to create these videos and the vast majority of my content, but I also invested in a Nikon tripod, which I use all of the time, and the Ulanzi smartphone rig that's mounted on top of it. There's a Rode Video Pro directional mic attached to the top, which again is a plug and play type of thing, which just means that my audio quality is still of a good quality. This setup, along with the portable iPhone folder, which is telescopic and also has its own lights, mean that actually creating content such as my Instagram stories when I'm doing lots of time lapse stuff uh, or when I'm doing reels, things like that, it's very simple and easy to be able to do them quickly because these things are readily at hand. I don't have to kind of build them up every single time. And because I'm an Apple fanboy, once I've created that content, rather than having to plug anything in, I can just airdrop my files straight onto my computer. In the same area, having two Ivis G2 uh, pocket lights, which I'm able to kind of use in various different setups have become invaluable. One I use uh, to create this blue slash purple effect, which hopefully creates a sort of brand continuity. And the other one I use almost like a uh, ring light essentially, but it's not as bulky as an actual proper ring light. So it just adds that little bit extra so that I'm not in shadow or completely blue. And all of these things are kept in my chest of drawers where I also store all of my journals, where I do my brainstorming and content creation and marketing ideas. And I soon found out that it was invaluable to have these in the same room in which I was working rather than in a separate room. And I had to go and fetch the journals and go backwards and forwards all of the time. Plus everything has a very specific home to satisfy my OCD. And of course, links to all mentioned products are in the description below. Now, as a result of all this content creation, this space gets a lot more messy than I ever imagined it would because maybe I'm changing outfits for a reel or I'm editing together various different bits of content at the same time as trying to edit audio so it all goes a bit crazy but I always make sure that I completely clean down my space, uh, spray it and try and get as much cat hair off it as possible. So at the end of the day, it still feels orderly again because that's a lovely space to come into the very next morning. So there you have it. That's an overview of my space that it is now. And hopefully I've given you a bit of an insight about what things have been really useful right from the get-go and other things I've adapted as my voiceover business has grown. I think the key takeaway is the fact that content creation has become so much more a crucial part of my business and therefore I've had to augment my studio to be able to function in that way as well as as a recording studio and a place where I just do my email marketing. Thanks as ever for joining me. Please do like, subscribe and spread the word about the channel and I look forward to seeing you next week.